Welcome to Lecture Online. In this video, we're going to do the exact same problem as in the previous video, but now we're going to find the exact force, the exact resultant force, by calculating the x and y components, the vertical and horizontal components of each of the forces acting on the hook, and adding all the vertical components together, adding all the horizontal components together, and then find the magnitude and the direction of the final force. So what we can do here is using a different color, we can say, well, uh, let's see, let me use blue. Here would be the x and y components of force one, so that would be F1 in the x direction, and this here would be F1 in the y direction. So these two components represent this single vector F1 right there, and we can do the same for the second force. We can say that this here is, whoop, I guess I should move this up a little bit, F1 in the x direction, so here is F2 in the x direction, and here is F2, oop, a little bit longer, like that, F2 in the y direction. Those are all vectors, of course. So these two components here represent the single vector F2 right there. And maybe make it a little bit longer. There we go. All right. Now, to find the total force, we need to add the x components and the y components together. Notice that x components act in the same direction, so we simply add them, but the y components act in opposite directions. This is in the negative direction, that is in the positive direction. We do have to take care of directions when we add vectors. All right, let's find the x and y components of each of the vectors first, and let's not worry about the signs yet. So, first of all, f1 in the x direction, the magnitude of that is equal to f1 times, now notice, since this is the adjacent side, relative to the hypotenuse, this represents the hypotenuse, this represents the adjacent side, and that's the angle between them, I can say that this is F1 times the cosine of 30 degrees, which is equal to 100 pounds, times the cosine of 30 degrees, which is 0.866, so this would be equal to 86.6 pounds. All right, F2 in the y direction, oh, no, not yet F2, we're still in F1, that's equal to F1 times the, and now this would be the opposite side to the angle, so that would be the sine of 30 degrees. Remember, with vectors, you can move vectors any place you like, so I can take this component here and move it over there to show that it's opposite to the angle right here, so therefore it becomes a sine of 30 degrees. So that would be 100 pounds times the sine of 30, which is 1 half, which is 50 pounds. So those are the two components, the two, the x and y components of force one. We do the same for the second force. So F2 in the x direction is equal to F2 times the cosine of, I believe it's a cosine because it's the adjacent side to the angle. So cosine of 45 degrees, which is 150 pounds times the cosine of 45 degrees, which is 0 0.707. So let's get a read on that. So 150 times 45, take the cosine, equals, and it would be 106.1, round it off to one decimal place. So 106.1 pounds. And we do the same for the y direction. F2 in the y direction is equal to F2 times the sine of 45 degrees. Notice that the y component would be opposite to the angle, and that would be equal to 150 pounds times the sine of 45 degrees, which would also be 106.1 pounds. Now you may say, well, wait a minute, isn't that force pointing in the negative direction? The answer is yes, it is, but I'm only finding the magnitude, so don't have to worry about it yet. Okay, now we want to find the resultant in the x direction. So F resultant, or F total, in the x direction is equal to F1 in the x direction, plus F2 in the x direction. Now notice I'm going to make that a vector. And now we do have to worry about the direction. All right, so this is equal to F1 in the x direction. That would be 86.6 pounds. And that would be in the x direction. So we can put x hat or i. You can use x or i, doesn't matter. Plus F2 in the x direction, which would be 106.1 pounds in the x direction. And when we add those two together, we get 192.7 pounds, 192.7 pounds in the x direction. So this is how we make sure we keep the right sign in the correct direction. Okay, now for the F total in the y direction. That is equal to F1 in the y direction plus F2 in the y direction. Again, I say plus because at this point I don't know yet. 
If it's positive negative direction, I will worry about that when I plug in the components. So this is F1 in the y direction, which is positive. So it will be a positive 50 pounds in the y direction. But the second component, F2y, is in the negative direction. That will be a minus 106.1 pounds in the y direction. So 50 minus 106, that would be a minus 56.1 pounds in the y direction. So these are the x and y components of the resultant vector. So finally, can say that F total is equal to 192.7 pounds in the x direction minus 56.1 pounds in the y direction. So that would be in vector format. What if I want to know the magnitude and the direction of the resultant force? To find the magnitude, I can simply say that F total is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. That would be the f total in the x direction squared plus f total in the y direction squared. Notice as I'm squaring this, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. So this is equal to the square root of the x direction would be 192.7 pounds. We square that plus the in the y direction would be a minus 56.1 pounds quantity squared. So we get 192.7, we square that, plus 56.1, and we square that, equals, then we take the square root, and we get 200.7 pounds. And that would be the magnitude of the resultant, so rounded off to the nearest pound would be 201 pounds. And finally, I want to know the direction. So let's draw the resultant force. The resultant force would look something like this. That would be F total, which means it would make an angle with the horizontal. Let's call that angle phi. And to find the angle phi, we can take the arc tangent of the opposite over the adjacent. So let's go ahead and do that. So to find the angle phi that is equal to the arc tangent of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. And of course, the opposite side would be the y component of the resultant force. The adjacent side would be the x component of the resultant force. So phi would be equal to the arctangent of the opposite side would be the y component, which would be 56.1 pounds, divided by the x component, which is 192.7. Now you may say, well, why did I use a positive number there instead of a negative number? Well, all I wanted to do was find the magnitude of that angle. So I don't care about negative or positive, I just care about how big it is. And I can see here that it's relative to the horizontal, so it would be that many degrees below the horizontal. So 56.1 divided by 192.7, I get 0.29, I take the arctangent of that, which is 16.2 degrees. 16.2 degrees, which means that the angle phi here, and let me use the red color, phi is equal to 16.2 degrees, and notice that it's 16.2 degrees below the horizontal axis. So if you want to call it negative 16.2, I'm good with that as well. But this is how we add forces vectorially. We find the components of each of the force first, the x and y components, then we add all the x and all the y components. When you do, you must make sure you have the correct sign. And then you find the total force in terms of the x and y component. If you want to find the total force in magnitude, use the Pythagorean theorem, get the value, and then you find the reference angle to whatever reference, uh, reference plane you want. And that gives you the total value of a total force of 200.7 pounds, 16.2 degrees. And if you want to indicate it, below the horizontal axis. And that's how we add vectors.